everybody. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, this is just a little uh, a little silly thing. I was just editing my fi my film for the um, following tutorial to come, and I had done that this morning. And I was looking at it. It looks like I have a black eye. I don't have a black eye. I don't know what happened in that picture. I have circles under my eyes, but I don't have a black eye. But I thought, oh, I don't want anybody to think I have a black eye. It might have been some makeup that smudged or something. I don't know. So anyway, this is just a little thing. I don't have a black eye. It looks it. I don't know why. Um, hopefully this doesn't look like I have a black eye. Um, but I, I, it's a tutorial to follow for my, my um, Scrabble family quilt. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. This is Jean here from True Love Quilts for You. Um, I have been busy, but making a quote, but for the first, but I first want to say thank you very much. I am feeling much better. Um, the last video I had been, um, suffering from shortness of breath and a cough. And I thought, oh no. Um, but we got to a doctor, a virtual doctor's visit and I got antibiotics and a steroid and inhaler and it seems to have worked. I must have had it, uh, some kind of chest infection, um, but the antibiotics cleared it up. So thank you so very much because I know quite a few of it were concerned. It's so kind of you. Um, I've been making a quilt because, uh, again, as you know, it's been over a month in uh, sheltering in place isolation. <laughs> and um, quite a lot of people I I'm following on Facebook are making what they're calling their coronavirus or their COVID-19 quilt. So I'm thinking, I don't want to call this that. I want to call it my family quilt. Um, because we're missing family and as you know we have a large family so I had got this and I've explained it in detail up close um, I, I hung it up uh, the cameras back there because I hung my quilt up here or Ian hung it up here um, I had gotten this fabric from um, eQuilter.com as you know I love eQuilter.com and it's a Scrabble tile fabric and it looks like it looks it comes in a panel and it's bordered by the blue and each of the um i'll show you up close each of the letters have the um actual uh tile point value in a, the hasbro Sc scrabble game hasbro has been for what 50 60 70 years putting putting out the scrabble game well they have um obviously licensed the fabric to be printed with the Scrabble tiles with the point value. And so when I get up close, I'll show you um, all of the names of our family are on this quilt. I had bought this, this fabric comes in panels. It's not by the yard. And again, I, ex I explained that in my, my, my tutorial to follow. Um, pretty in-depth tutorial. And I had never obviously made this quilt before. Um, using this fabric or using what what how I actually um, created the crossword puzzle grid I had bought the fabric I had bought four panels there are about I believe don't quote me 90 92 or 96 uh, letters on one panel and I think it was eight or nine dollars for the panel I figured out that I needed four panels and even that, we didn't have enough um, of one of the, a few of the J's. We have a tremendous amount of J's in our name, J's and L's. And the panel only had, only had a couple. So I figured out, I spent about $36 on the, the, the letters for this. And then the rest are, I used um, uh, five inch squares, a million of them. But you could just use scraps. This is an incredible way to make a scrap, scrappy, use your scraps up. Now, I have to say that I, and I explained it to you, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling well, actually, when I started making this, and I just, I didn't want something complicated. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like sewing whatsoever, um, and I just thought, what can I do? I miss my family. I found, I refound my fabric that I bought about 18 months ago, my letters, and I thought, um, I, I, I started cutting out my, five inch squares for my, or my scraps, if you would use. And this measures, this measures here about three and a half, let's see, about three and a half by three, this, this here. And it would have been, and I cut them out of the yardage and it, it allows for this blue border. Well, of course, I did not include the blue border, which is about a quarter of an inch around the, each tile. Well, I got it wrong. I had cut out three inch squares for this, for this, my scraps fabrics, 
um, from my other, all my other straps. But I, I should have cut them three and a half inch by three inch. Anyway, I, I jiggery pokered it and I, I, I made it work with my seam allowances. But you'll see what I was doing there. And again, I'm not advocating, I did it wrong, but I'm, and I, I got it right though. I'm not advocating sloppy cutting. And I, I addressed that. Um, but it turned out very well. And I show you in depth how I did that. Um, so I used all my letters. Um, I also wanted to show you that the actual crossword grid, I, I, I googled how to make a crossword puzzle. And up comes um, quite a few uh, puzzle making sites. Now some of them you have to buy. Uh, I didn't have to buy this one. I found this one and it was called, it's from www.crosswordhobbyist, H-O-B-B-Y-I-S-T dot com www.crosswordhobbyist.com and all you do is you you type in whatever letters or, or words or names that you have as and it, for us it was my husband Ian and I our 10 children their spouses and then our 16 grandchildren plus a few other names true love family friends I put on here and then it automatically fills a grid now this grid here is 24 24 squares by 24 squares to here without the borders you can get a smaller grid I had to use because we had 36 37 names and words on here I had to use the largest 24 by 24 grid now of course if you were using larger letters if you made perhaps made your own then you wouldn't then then you wouldn't need a, a huge great big grid maybe you would only need 15 blocks by 15 blocks what i'm saying is what if you go to this site or any others that pop up crossword puzzle making um it's interesting because um it 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 automatically does this for you now they, it automatically puts them into a crossword puzzle across and down now i i made again i had never made one and i made a a mistake or a, a learning curve that I'm passing on to you if you decide to do this what I had done is I had I listed because we have so many very carefully got the spellings right of all of our grandchildren I I listed all of the names Ian Jean Luke family Justin family I listed all the names and then from my yardage from my fabric I cut out every single letter and made a pile, which I'll show you in my tutorial, with a pin. Well, of course, as I was going along, I didn't re I, I completely forgot, obviously in a crossword puzzle, that words intersect. So, so I had cut out the word, I had cut out our granddaughter, Riel. Well, of course, when I came to Riel, Jean-Pierre, his R was the, her first letter. So I didn't need the R of Riel. So what I'm saying to you is if you do this, if you embark on it, it was easy. This was easy. I was just a bunch of square sewn together, right? Row by row. I did row by row. No block form. This is just row by row. That if you would get your grid with your names printed out, then what you can do is you can actually go row by row and see, oh, I need, I need uh, the top row would be an S and a Z write that down and then the second row you would need an A, an A, a J and a J so you could write that down and tick off what letters you would need to make your 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 thing I I had all of these left over I had all of these ones left over and as you'll see again as I was selling it I realized oh I didn't need that because the, the, it inter intersects but anybody with a brain can figure that out. I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I was halfway along. But the way, I, the way I kept my names in order, I quite liked that way. And I, again, I will show you in that tutorial. Um, then I just, I had done the grid 24 by 24. This quilt measures um, about 70 inches across by 83 inches down because it was a square, the, the, 24, the 24 blocks by the 24 blocks or squares I should say the small squares which ended up like three two and a half inches or something like that 
and again I sort of got it wrong but I show you that then I added a larger border here I, 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 I added um, larger borders on the bottom and the top and then I added smaller borders on the side just to make it more of a rectangle as opposed to a square my true love family again I'll take some pictures of it um, I have an Accu quilt cutter and I just cut them out and I just free motion quilted them on everything else was straight stitch everything else was straight stitch I, st I, I stitched I quilted this in the grid I, I mean in the ditch I just straight seams again because um I was going to put Ian and I were looking at this when it was hanging up in the process and I was going to put some red rickrack around to differentiate the this the um the inside to the border and Elliot came in and he said no he said everything is angular on a scrabble board which is true so we 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 nixed the the um rickrack but then I put the red around the the bottom to make it the, to make it pop and to really make it pop and again I'll show you a picture the border the little border on the bottom and the binding are different it's two different reds and of course I chose um, a beautiful red floral as I as I was saying this wasn't made perfectly um, I wasn't stressing there's quite a lot of my my squares aren't aren't perfect and again I'm not I'm not saying don't do something perfect but in this um, stressful time, I thought I just want to make a pretty. I just want to make a pretty quilt, and I'm not really all that bothered. Um, but by all means, if you would get this fabric, and I will put the link up. I think I know how to do that. Um, if you want to get, because they still have it. They still have it. It's still available. Um, you would be cutting your piece exactly this size, obviously. So you 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 know, and then you end up with just the tile showing. I did explain if you wanted to use the blue, it's about, it's only about, it's a little over quarter of an inch um, or half an inch between all of the letters when you get it. So you would, if you wanted to border each letter, I don't know. I didn't. I just made it so you don't see any blue whatsoever. That's from the manufacturer. Um, and yes, I pulled red. As I said, I pulled red, my favorite color. Um, I love this. And we can't be with our family, we can't be with our grandchildren, we can't be with our children right now. Um, and I was feeling a little bit, <laughs> you know, they've been dropping off groceries and doing shopping for us. This has been a surreal, uh, has it been an ordeal? We're so blessed. I was talking to Malia, we FaceTimed the other day, I was talking, and she said, you know, we're at home, we have plenty of food, we have technology, we, she has her husband, we have each other. Um, you know, we're, we're not going to work, we're resting, okay, the, the residual is like, <gasps> like, we're not going to work, um, but it'll pass, obviously, and we'll all hopefully get back on some kind of whatever the new normal will be, we were talking about that, whatever the new normal will be. Are we going to always wear masks outside? I was making masks and I made quite a few of them. Friends and family have come and picked them up. Um, and I have to make some more actually. Um, I found that, as I was saying before, I found it very draining. I found that very draining. Um, but it was a good thing that I was doing. But why I had to do it, not a good thing. Anyway, so here's my little family, true love family Scrabble quilt tutorial. Long tutorial because I go into depth how I did it. Again, you, you learn from my mistakes. Um, cut your squares properly. I didn't. Um, it's okay. It's fine. And then um, figure out your grid to actually, so you don't uh, double up on your letters if, you, if, if you're going to be doing it that way. Again, this is a very large uh, grid crossword. We had a lot of names, but it would be awesome for a, a reunion or for an anniversary present or a smaller scale if you have just a small family. And somebody said, oh, I don't have any family left. I'm thinking, well, well it doesn't matter. You could put, you know, just for your own comfort, you could put family names. You could put friends names. You could put names who've, of people who have died, who were near and dear to you, wrap yourself up in their love. Um, you could do all sorts of things. It's not just limited. So if you want to have a go, again, if you can't get this fabric, Ian and I were talking, I mean, not that it would be, it may be a bit bootleg, but you could just get like tan fabric and then a, a, an actual uh, a fabric marker and make the, make the letters 
You can always find Scrabble letters. It's cute because these, I love the fact that it has the point value on each tile for the actual Scrabble letters. Um, this is pre-printed, of course, from the manufacturer. But if, if all else fails, you could actually make your letters or even embroider them if you have an embroidery machine and not too many letters. Um, so anyway, yeah, the sky's your limit to make your names. And um, we personalized it with the True Love family. So I'll take some close-up pictures, and I do hope you enjoy the tutorial. Please stay safe, play it, play, stay indoors if you can, um, and we will, all, we will all meet again soon under um, better circumstances. Actually, um, I'm dressed, we're having a Zoom meeting for our congregation. We're going to be getting together. Um, we're doing that a couple times a week. It's lovely, and also with the family. So I have to go now. The sun is shining here in Pennsylvania, and I uh, send our with true loves. All of these people <laughs> send their regards to you guys, and I hope you have a happy, safe day. See you later. Bye. So this was the fabric that I was talking to you about in the beginning. I've already started cutting it up. I have it here on my ladder, um, and it's from. I'll go, try to go very slowly. As you can see, um, it's a Scrabble letters. I had to get. I figured out about four yards of this fabric to get all of our 36 names. Now it's from, I'll do go slowly here, it's from um, Hasbro. Oh, who actually makes a Scrabble game, yeah. All rights reserved. This is a, I'm not selling this obviously, so I can use this for my um, myself. It's called, it's called Camelot Fabrics, CamelotFabric.com, of course not intended for children's sleepwear. The number of this fabric, if you wanted to look it up, is 9507011. Was done in 2018 by Hasbro. Now, again, try to go slow here. Excuse the mess. This is the fabric as it comes off the bolt, and it's all of the, um, as you can see, the fab, the uh, Scrabble tiles. With their, with their, um, I thought, I thought, I thought that was 10 though. Maybe, maybe it's not exactly true. Um, well, maybe it is, yeah. Anyway, it's the Scrabble tiles. Um, this is how it comes. Now, as I was saying, in order for me to get all 36 of uh, the True Love names, uh, my, myself, Ian, Ian, Jean, and 10 children, their spouses, and 16 grandchildren, I've had to cut these up. And what I've done, this is how I've done it. Um, I've just cut them up. Uh, oh, I've sort of cut them up by rows off of my, off of the, off of the, the um, lot. But then I've cut them into, obviously, the alphabet. And so I'm pulling from here. I've already done quite a few of our names. And just to keep me in check, I've pulled the names, put them in order, and then put a little post-it note. So now I'm going to be doing, let me, let me see here. I'm doing this with one hand, try not to shake it. I'm going to be doing Sophia. So what I'll do is I'll just pull the S, I'll just put that over there, S-O-F up here, I-A. So I'll just do that, and then I will pin, obviously, I mean, it's not rocket science, I'll just pin that, I'll pin Sophia to that pile there. Um, and as I showed you in the beginning, let me get it, let me get it up close here. This is my, I, I'd done this last year before baby Warren was built, born. Um, I went onto this site here, which I will have talked about. And so these, it's sort of printed out over here. Uh, there's Phoebe's name. So here's all... Uh, 26. I, I like this the way this configured it, the True Love family. And then these are all of our, our names on this grid. Now, I've chosen a grid that is 23 squares down, 23 squares across. So, so these squares here measure two and a half by three inches. So when I go to cut my other squares to fill in the blanks, not a lot because we have so many names, um, I will be cutting those squares also two and, a half, two and a half by three inches. And I'm going to be doing this row by row. So on the top row, let me see if I can see this. 
um, yeah, on the top row, excuse me, my fingers, um, I just have the D, starting with Dominic, I, I will just, I'll just put the, um, piece of fabric there, little square, and then just continue squares over there. It's 22 squares, or 21 squares. And then when I go, or 20, 20 squares, because there's two squares before the D. So it's not rocket science, as you can see. But I find it, I, I think it's gonna be easier that I have my names in piles. So when I go to pull, when I go to pull the D, when I go to go, that's sort of going down, the next row I can find the, the O for like Dominic and then M going right down. So this is how I'm doing this. Um, I've just started cutting out my letters. Um, and as I said, I had to get four, may, I believe you, yeah, I had to get four yards of this um, because I figured out, they tell you on the, uh, when you go there, what is involved in a yard cut, how many letters you get. So it's pretty, pretty good. Um, most people obviously wouldn't have 36 names, quite long names. Um, like I said, we have a lot of J's, and I think that was the reason um, that I had to get so much yardage because I don't think there's an awful lot of J's, there's one, um, that, that come. So I had to get the yardage to get the other J's. Um, yeah, so that's, how, that's where I am right now. Um, I think it's going to be pretty. Now we do have to, I do have to figure out exactly what colors I'm going to be, um, making this quilt. I'm not obviously doing, I'm not doing the blue. I'm just making the tile. And so I'm cutting out the quarter of an inch, which they allow you. There's a half an inch here and they allow you obviously to cut out the quarter of an inch. So when you sew, you're just sewing the scrabble tile onto your next squares. But I have to figure that out. But um, I will have talked about that in the beginning. So I'm just gonna continue cutting out my, my words, my letters to make my names. Okay, so we're making, I'm making this scrabble quilt. And I've made my piles of letters, of, of uh, names. They're all in order. We got a million names going here mm -hmm. from Ian and Jean all the way down. 36 people. And uh, 36 people. And my husband comes in and oh, he starts <laughs> obsessing. Organizing. Why are you organizing? Well, for future use in the uh, year 2080. When, when we have 26 more grandchildren, we're going to need a lot more letters. So Ian comes in and he starts, <laughs> he starts cutting up these letters in real nice. See, it's easier to put away. But you're not putting it away. Put it away well, neatly then. Do in a minute. Okay, fold it up and Is put that it away. That's the lot. Okay, well here. Put, oh, put that back. I know, put the rotary cutter back. <sighs> I know, what are you cut doing? Cut fingers off. Yeah, don't. Who's cut fingers off in the I, past? I cut my finger off in the past. <laughs> I know, I know, with a rotary cutter, oh, 20 well, years that. ago. Oh, you did a good job, Ian. Well, fairly good. Oops, that one's a, uh, that one's a little bit wonky. You gotta cut that off. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Fold them up nice and neat. Oh. <laughs> oh, this one's nice and neat. Yeah. Ian's home because of the coronavirus. Isn't it wonderful? He's, I've had my husband here for, for a month <laughs> and he's in my sewing room helping me. Oh dear, oh dear. How's that? Oh, that's lovely. How's that? Yeah, that's nice. How's that? They saying cricket in England. Yeah, how's that? How's that? <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. All right. Bye. So here are my piles of cut and uh, sorted letters in our entire family, starting with Ian and Jean and then going down to our oldest son, his family, second son, family, third son all the way down to our, our Maxwell. Uh, yeah, oh no, oh yeah, that's right. We have true love, family, friends, and true love, family, and friends, and then Maxwell. So I've just put them like that, but this, I wanted to show you, we just printed out another, a better, a better, bit of a better grid. So this is sort of my pattern. I guess that's what you would call it, my pattern. And I do believe, I think now it's 24 down by 24. So here are all of our names. It's just sort of printed wrong there. This is, um, so I just start over here. Um, these are all of our names. Um, true love family there and friends there. Um, so now this is, as I say, this will be my pattern. My letters here are, as I was saying, they're going to be two and a half 
uh, two and a half by three inches. Finished. So now I have to count all of these squares, the the uh, the empty ones, and figure out how many how many uh, squares two and a half inch by three inch squares, and then I'll go along and I'll start sewing rows. It may be a bit tedious. It's not a quick project, but it's certainly not a hard project whatsoever. Following carefully the uh, grid here, what I will do so I keep, keep nice and uh, um, not confused, I'll put a piece of paper over the rest and I'll just work, on, work my way down row by row, marking, marking it off as I go. And then I can I can uh, start building in this area more of my letters and then just making sure uh, because I want to keep this um, nice and uh, proper so I really want to make sure my letters are stitched to my fabric but I'm going to start choosing my fabric for my outside bits here and I'll, I'll come back and tell you what I've come up with I'm not quite sure right yet <laughs> So I've come to the part where I'm going to choose my fabrics. And let me see if I'm in the frame here. Yeah. Um, so what I have had, what I, I've had, um, I have had for a while um, quite a few packets of um, uh, charm squares. All sort of different kinds. 42 pieces in each pack. These were fairly inexpensive. Um, that one was $6.00. For the pack and i believe that one was 4.99 five dollars for the pack i believe i got them um uh two and a half, yeah i believe i got them at tuesday morning a place here in america fairly inexpensive but i also realized i have i'm going to pull um my fat a uh, um a, a layer cake which the the fabrics that i've chosen here this is a real pretty layer cake by um three sisters moda fabric this was um not cheap but I'm, I'm, I can get my, I'm cutting out three inch squares. I'll show you that. But I like this fabric here. I probably won't be using all of it. I like this fabric here because it's sort of this down home, lovely, homey look that I'm going for. These, as you see, my pinks and my greens, um, sort of country, this quilt's going to be. And I think that will, I think that will go very nicely with the tan tile, you know, forget that blue it's just going to be this tan tile here surrounded by pretty florals it's going to be a soft pretty quilt now what i've come to the conclusion i haven't i have not from my pattern i've not actually counted each square here what i have done is i think i'm pretty much pretty sure i have enough i know there's 23 rows and except for this top row which is like i will need 21 squares to fill that out most of them come down to they average about 12 12 to 13 squares on each row so i figured out i i need about 200 203 inch squares i've started cutting two out of my charm squares um three inch squares to go with my um to go with the size of my tile when i put it together so what i'm doing is i know that with one one two three four i've already done one and some 10 inch squares that I'll have enough to be able to cut three inch squares out of these. Now, I don't feel bad right now. Let me just show you about cutting my charm square up because I end up with this fabric here. I end up after I cut my three inch squares, I end up with obviously uh, about is about two inch and then about a, a two, two inch by five inch and then a two inch by say three inch. Um, piece but like I can make this into like a piano key border for another quilt I will save these these will absolutely not go to waste whatsoever but out of that I get my three inch squares so again as, as you've as you've seen me do this I'm just going to pull I'll just pull some fat some of my um charm squares just as they come off the pack there there's a pretty pretty this is called pink lady this is these are pretty so they're all sort of pinks and creams and greens so i'm going to put that on my my board here just scratch them together and then as you know i just line it up on my mat here on a line let me just go up there line it up on a line i take my one ruler this ruler here i have 
and I take nice and square. And then I take my second ruler, as you know, I'm a fan of three ruler, uh, two ruler methods. I find my three inch square, three inch um, mark there. And what I will do is I'll just cut that way, save that bit right there, and then just turn it and find my three inch. There's my pile and then put that up. And I will just continue to pull, to pull from my charm squares. I take quite a, I take quite a lot. There might be eight or eight there, but I know my, my um, rotary cutter can t go, can go through that. Just off of the thing. So it's working out fairly quickly. Although, as I said, it's not a quick project. You want to do this, obviously, the best way is to use your scraps, just scraps. If you don't want to use your precious five inch squares, um, by all means, you want to keep your five inch squares intact, but again, I will not, this, this fabric will not go to waste. So I'm just, as you can see, just put them on there and I'll just continue cutting my squares until I have enough to start. And then I will see how much I have to cut into my, um, I actually, I might have, a, I might have some more of this, um, I think I do have some more of these in another in another hat box I must I, I had them when I was moving um, I have to find that other hat box I don't think I'm gonna have to go into my 10 inch squares I have somewhere <laughs> here I have a hat box full of um, other charm squares um, that I had gotten a long time ago um, but these are pretty yeah this is sort of like all pretty colonially down homey pinks and reds and greens my favorites um, I'll have some I'll have some uh, du duplicates there, but that's fine. So I'm just going to continue cutting my squares, and then it's just a matter of me sewing my things together, but I'll be back. I've just brought you over to my machine and I just want to show you my setup here what I'm actually doing uh, because again we have a large family what I've done is I have separated all of our children's in, in uh, alphabetical order or not alphabetical order um, order of birth their families our, our oldest son second son third son fourth son fifth son sixth son seventh son eighth daughter, ninth son, tenth son, their respective families, and then there's Ian and Jean, and then the three words we have, family, true love, and friends here, and they have all of their letters underneath, the pinned. Well, again, I refer you back down to my, my uh, pattern here. Let's see if I can get it. I don't want to go too fast, and I have already done one, two, three. I've already done four rows from my pattern. I put this here so I don't get confused. So as you can see, I've done Zach. I'm set finishing up Sarah, Jackson, Luke, Amy, uh, Juliet. I'm start, start, starting Jean. So I'm on my fifth line. And I'm going to bring that down, my card, to there. And again, it's, it's in here. I can see that it's, there's a space and an H to finish up Sarah. And then an S to start that. And then I'm coming over to our son Justin and then finish up Juliet Stryker. So this is my line. So what I'm doing is I'm very, being very careful to count my, my uh, spaces. But I'm, I was finding it much easier. Let me go slow here. To, to keep all my names in order and in place. I have my squares here. And as I said in the beginning, I messed up. I completely, this was a bit of a brainless um, 
just a, a not brainless, a mindless task I wanted. These are a little bit small, but I'll show you how, what happened here. So I'm just going to come over and show you what I've actually finished or what I've actually been doing. Here are the first four rows. You saw my pattern. So there's Sarah, we Sarah, Jackson, Zach. And these are my little squares. Are they matching up the points? Uh, hardly, not at all. <laughs> not, no, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. I am not obsessing. Usually I quite like... I quite like to do things pretty good. They're okay. Um, a couple of them are out. I'm not pinning anything. I just want to do this. I just want it to be, like I said, I, I don't want it to be so precise that I have to really think about it. And I do iron my things. I do starch my things. There's my Luke and Amy. This would be J-E-A-N. I'm, I'm following my pattern. There's Juliet. Well, I'll start there. But I'm out. I'm there out slightly. I got a tuck. I am not bothered about that at all at all sometimes it's just better to just just enjoy yourself now because i i cut these i cut these smaller than this you see the blue i have a quarter inch seam or a bit more there and not quite a quarter inch seam there i just split the difference i just split the difference when i come when i come down here uh, as you can see here, that's going to be I'm at an eighth of an inch. I'll go up there a little bit. Go up there. I don't. I'm not advocating sloppy work. I think you know by now if you followed me. I do pretty good work. But on this case, I messed up, and I'm not about to go and cut these um, squares bigger because I've already cut them out. And the 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 matter of difference here is because I wasn't precise cutting these either. I just cut them out, just sort of slice them off with a rotary cutter. I'm just getting rid of that blue. And if it goes above this line here, that's fine to make up that seam allowance. It's absolutely fine. And as you can see, there's not a real, you know, they're not buckling or anything. Is it perfect? No. But will it be perfect when it's done? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it's our lovely family. I just want to, I can't cuddle them, I can't hug them, I just want to, I just want to hold them close to our heart. That is the reason for this quilt. I am not going to call it a coronavirus quilt. That is, that is evil. This is my family and my love quilt. So I'm going to go back. Let me just come over here again. I'm going to come back here. And now, again... I'm going to be working on my fifth line. There's, there is a space there. There's a thing and an H. Then um, I'm going to put my camera up and show you actually how I do this to make it um, easy for me. I'll put my camera back up. So, as I said, I'm going to be working on my fifth line down. And it starts with a, a piece of fabric and then an H, which I've is the last name of Sarah. So I have it in front of me that Sarah is, is, uh, uh, let me see. Oh yeah. So I didn't even need that A because I, Jackson took that up. So that, so I don't need this A. <laughs> there you go. A couple of them will, will, um, I won't need the letters, but I've done them in case. So here's my H for my Sarah. I can just put this over here. I've done that. So what I'm going to do is from my pile here, I just keep it right to the, as you know, I, I like I like sometimes just to keep things to the right of my needle here. So I am going to just be grabbing willy-nilly, absolutely. So the H is going to go, and again, you see this is too this is too big. I'm just going to split the difference, and I'm going to sew on this side because I can see where that tan tile is. And again, I'm not advocating sloppy stitching. I mean, sloppy cutting whatsoever, but. Um, I, I've started this of an evening time and I know that when I go to stitch this seam, I'll make that a little bit smaller and that be an eighth of an inch, maybe up to a quarter of an inch. So now I go to my pattern and now I see I've done my fabric and H, then I need two squares. And again, I'm not going to sew them onto there. I'm going to sew these, I'm going to sew them together. And again, I'm just pulling, I'm just pulling very random. I'll just sew those two squares together at about a quarter of an inch. I 
should bring my needle up. <laughs> so I, I know that there's two squares after the H, and so I'll just, again, split the difference there on that one, because I messed up, and then just come back and stitch that on the, on the tan tile. There. Now, I know here, after my A, um, after my two squares, I have to stitch an A, and that I'm doing, this is Samantha, so I'm going to find Sam's name, which is in this pile over here, excuse me, that's in this pile, this is our, our son, our grandson and his wife, where's Samantha, there she is, so I'm finding her name, and I'm attaching the A, because that's, yeah, attaching the A there, I'm putting this back into her pile. So as you can see, it's very important, what is important is keeping your letters, your names in order, so you're not just grabbing you're not just grabbing, uh, you know, letters, making a mess. So now, after my A, I see that I have one, two, three, four colors. And again, I'm just going to pull. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just pulling a quarter of an inch. This way, if I start, you know, like I found, if I start um, trying to really think, you know, attach them to the rows, like, you know, one, one after the A, two after the A. I just am doing it in like sort of block form. So I need one, two, three, four. Of course, pretty sides together. All I'm doing is sewing squares together. Easy, easy quilt. So check that again. Check that again. I have my, my fabric, my H. One, two, my A, one, two, three, four. A, one, two, three, four. Now I'll sew that together. And again, split the difference on that seam. seam. And it all comes out in the wash. <laughs> Fun, lovely quilt. Now, I'll go back to my pattern. Now, I see that I can find the, my son Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N. I can go to his pile over here. Whoops, 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 whoops. Yep, sorry. I can go up to his pile here. There he is. That's his whole name. I'm going to just be, there's my Justin. Put this aside for a moment. Take his thing off. And then I'm just going to start sewing his tiles together. Now these actually fit because there's all they're all the same size. So I'm just so whoops. Justin. And hold on. Okay, so I think I've run out of my bobbin thread. I'll be right back. So I'm I'm sewing my Justin together <laughs> and as you can see um, even though they're bordered with the, with the blue, I don't include that. By all means, if you would want to really be proper and incredibly uh, particular and specific, you could sash your letters uh, with the blue or any other color to make them pop, to make them stand out, if you liked, the, if you liked them all, you know, bordered. But I quite like just the name, the tiles together. So, but I, what I am doing is because these are cut pretty much the same. I am just, I'm just um, matching up the actual tan tile of the, uh, of the letter here, of the fabric. And I can see right through that. So just go down there. And then there's my Justin right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check again. I'm going to keep checking because sometimes you, you might get a bit confused or whatever. So I have a fabric H, 1, 2, A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then my Justin. So now I'm just going to sew Justin onto there. And then, as I, as I keep saying, it's not rocket science. It's very, it's very simple. 
sewing squares together. Um, but I like to break it down. I like to break it down this way. So there's my Justin. So then I will just see now, I won't bore you, I'll continue, that I have after Justin, this is very important to have your card here to keep your pattern, especially when you're sewing row by row. I find this very, very uh, important. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four pieces of fabric. I'll just sew, again, just grab four pieces of fabric. I don't love that one with a stripe. I have a, I love the fabric. I have a couple of them, but I didn't incorporate that for some reason. I just wanted a, I just wanted these li little solids here. So I try to get a bit of, uh, again, don't overthink it, but there's a little bit of blue on the green. So I, I need four pieces of fabric to finish or to, to continue my line, my, my fifth row. dark green. I really am not thinking this. I like the fabric lines. There's about four different fabric lines here. They all go together quite well. They all, they, they all go nice. Again, I check my pattern after my Justin. And what do I, what do I need? One, two, three, four. Put my pattern down and just attach this Again, splitting the difference there. That's okay. Now, the reason I did take some time to arrange my letters, my words, was, was I'm now looking at the name Juliet. So I have J-U-L. I need her I to go next. And that's right up there. I was working, remember, with Juliet. So I pull out her eye, put her letters back, and then attach that. And then I need, I'm going to finish up this row. Very, it goes very quickly. I'm going to take a, uh, I'll take a pale or pink, one piece of fabric. That's a little bit of a wider seam, so I'll just make that, again, it's not quite a quarter inch, maybe it's a little bit more, a little bit less. Some of my corners don't match, eh, it's fine. And then I'm going to finish up with the name, okay, Striker, so I know I was starting with Strikers, his T there that I need is right here. There's my striker. And there's his T, which is the next one because he's at he's striker going down. I put him in his family pile. And then strikers, then that fifth line ends with two pieces of fabric and I will just sew them onto the end here. And I'll finish with a pink. I'll finish with a lighter one. Now I'll take you over to my ironing board and show you what I do now. So I bought my, my, my top over to my ironing board and here's what I've just taken off of my, um, my sewing machine here. Let me just see. I'm just taking this line off. Let me just bring this up like that. I've just taken this row off of here. Um, now, what I do when I'm working with very small pieces, um, uh, especially little squares, and they can get all a little bit skewed. I do use a finishing starch, or this is a spray sizing, or you can use a very light starch. Sometimes I just use a very light finished starch. 
um, when I'm when I'm ironing my bits to keep everything nice and square because with a lot of tiny little seams you can get out of whack. What I do do as you if any of you've been following me, I usually usually very important. I usually set my seams. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. There's too many seams right now. I just want to get this done and cuddle with it. But what I am doing is I'm taking care to make sure that each row is ironed one way and then the other row is ironed the other way. That makes the nesting together, if I do want to do it fairly properly, um, easier. So I can see that this row here, the seams are going that way. All right. So now I want to iron, when I go to iron this row here that I've just done, I'm going to iron it on the I'm going to turn it over and iron it on the wrong side. I'm going to iron these seams going this way. These seams are going to be going this way. So I'll just put this up here out of the way for a minute. And then making sure it's really nice and square or straight or in a nice line. I'm just going to give it a light spray. And then just push my seams, just nudge them, just nudge them along. And as you can see, some are bigger, some are smaller. I, it's, it's fine, they get lost in the seam allowance there. But I'm just gonna, just, just tug this so they just lay nice and flat. Just push this right along, like that. Obviously, if you would, if you, if any of you would get this, I'll explain it in the beginning. If you, any of you get this fabric, you would obviously cut your, do it properly and cut these, uh, whatever this is, three and a half inches square or something like that. But for now, I'm just going to press these along. Let me just get, finish up here. A bit more spray. And then just, just, I'm just, I'm just tugging this gently to, to open up those seams. I'm pushing it right, right along. Right along like that. And I've kept that nice and nice and straight. Because working with so many smaller pieces, or smaller rows and smaller pieces, it can go a little bit wonky. Now, here's my quilt top, this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure everything lines up. There's my ST for my striker, Juliet. This is my, over here is my Jean, J-E-A-N. So what I'm going to do is, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, again, jiggery poker. If you want to do it absolutely properly, you can. I'm going to just bring this end over there. And... I'm just going to eyeball and squeeze together as I sew these nested seams. If they're not perfect, that's fine. That is, that's pretty good. Just push that up a little bit there. I'm just going to sew that seam. And again, if my corners and my bits don't match, I'm perfectly fine with that because the end result would just be lovely. And I will have lost that blue. I will have lost that blue and I will have lost and the seam allowance will be absolutely perfect because I probably I'm just going to stitch this in the ditch probably um, just go along or just a grid I'm not sure so these will be nice and they'll be nice and firm some of them will be a little less than quarter of an inch but I'm fine with that so I'm just going to go and I'm just going to stitch this row now so I've just sewn my fifth row onto the top of my quilt and what I do find very important is after I set, I do set this seam. I will just go along, and since I've, I've uh, pressed this row, I can, can just push it along right there, just like that. And then when I, when I, and I'll, I'll do the whole thing. Let me just see. It's getting longer now. <laughs> so I'll set this seam real nice. Just going along like that. And I keep sort of ironing my top. I think the ironing is so very, very important. As you know, if you've been following me, it's the most important thing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip my quilt up like this. And then I'm going to push my 
bottom seam up. I'm going to push that up. I'm going to nudge that right up, keeping it nice and straight still. Keeping that nice and straight. I'm going to push the, this seam that I've just done, keeping it nice and straight with my fingernails, and then just rolling that up and pushing, rolling it and pushing, so I don't get any tucks. As you can, as you know, working with cotton, cotton stretches beautifully, um, either either to your advantage or not. But in this case, and then it, it, it you know, uh, it's a good thing. So it just, I, I just get a nice, I get a nice, crisp seam there. As you see, it's a little bit wonky. It's lovely, beautiful. I'm beginning my striker. <laughs> And actually, since it's, get, it's growing a little bit, what I'll do is I'll go to the side now. I'm just pushing that up like that, keeping it all nice and straight. There's some threads there. I'm just pushing this right up. Actually, that's a, there's a little bit of blue there. That bothers me. I'm just going to go and I'm just going to just tighten up that seam just a little tiny bit, just a little. Again, let me set that seam there and then just push it this way. I'll start at this end. And so there's my fifth row. And my Zach. Jackson. So the names are coming, are coming together. I love it. <laughs> so sweet. Justin. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to, just going to go back and just tighten that seam up a little bit because there's a little bit of blue and I don't want that. I don't want that tile showing at all. So that's how my quilt is going to progress um, or is progressing. I think it's just beautiful, um, row by row by row, following my pattern and not trying to do the whole row. Just do, you know, go uh, find your pattern and do one and then find your other letter and do one. Um, and that way you're not daunted with, oh my goodness, keeping track of 23 or 25 or however big your quilt is when you're sewing your squares together with this. So I'll be back. So I'm working on my Scrabble quilt here. And I've gotten about halfway done. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. A little bit more than halfway done. Um, I'm really quite pleased the way it's turning out. Again, you can't see the blue of my uh, around the letter that you saw in the fabric. Um, I've just I've cut that off. But here's Maxwell's name and Caitlin, Juliet, Stryker, all of our kids and grandkids. But I just wanted to explain something. As you saw in my, my, the, my last clip or so, I had been putting my um, letters, my, my words from my pattern um, together. I had cut all my words out. And as I, as I was telling you, I have, we have 36 names of our family, um, children, grandchildren, um, spouses. Um, there's 36. And then we have included the name true love, the word family, the name, the word friends. Uh, friends is over here. Um, so I had cut out all of the names. Um, I mean, all of the, the, the words. Like this is family from F to L. I mean, from F to Y, obviously. This is a really good way to keep this um, in order. Obviously, we have many more names than probably the, the average family would have. But what I, what I came to the conclusion as I was making this is obviously there's going to be um, letters that are going to intersect and that when I pull out my my when I'm working on the name Juliet oops I realized I didn't need the T of her last letter because Caitlin on the crosswise takes it up if you understand that so I would only have needed one T so what I'm saying is I have I'm halfway through and I have all of these extra letters that I had cut out that I'm not using, which is a good thing. 
because if I want to ever make this again, I don't think I'm ever going to make it again. But, um, but what I'm saying is if you follow this pattern, and as I was saying, this is sort of the pattern, if you would, if you would take the time um, to figure out the, the cross and the, the up, the up, the across and the down of your sort of crossword puzzle, you can eliminate the one letter if you would take the time after you have this grid printed out. I didn't do that. I just have all my names and then I end up with extra letters. It's no big deal to me um, for another quilt or something. So that, that, that's just a little thing because all of a sudden I realized, oh I, oh, I don't need the T of Juliet because it's taken up with the T of Caitlin. Oh, I don't need the Y of Stryker because it's taken up with the Y of Caitlin there. I didn't need the A on Jean because Amy has taken that up. So, as a, and again, we're constructing this row by row and it's, it's, it's coming along nicely. So I'm just going to keep, keep doing this. Um, again, it's not perfect. It's so not perfect. I'm not, I just want to make it and just, uh, it's just some, some, uh, some lovely, uh, diversion, a happy diversion to make my family quilt. So that was just a little trick if you want to, and I'll address that at the beginning. Of course, I have addressed it at the beginning, but if you want to, uh, figure out the letters that you need to the, to the T, you can do that. All right, I'm going to continue. So I'm back over at my machine, finishing up, well, working on my quilt. Um, and as you can see, I've started and I have backstitched on all of these, on all of these um, seams here, because there's an awfully lot of seams there. I am going to be putting a small border on this, but I backstitch on that. Usually we don't have to backstitch, but at the beginning of these seams, I am. And as I was saying, I have just cut these pretty, I've cut these all pretty much three inch by three inch, but as I was saying before, let me get it, the letters are bigger. <laughs> I just sort of cut them. And so when I come to the letters here, you'll see my seam allowance is bigger, but I just make up for that. It's okay. Um, I'm, I have pressed these seams this way and those seams that way. So they pretty much nest. I just am feeling that with my finger. Whether it's a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch or a little bit more or less, uh, I'm fine. As you can see, here I am working on the name Warren. And my I'm finishing up with the N here. And it matches pretty good. And as you can see, my blue of my blue letters is much bigger than that seam allowance there. Which isn't quite a quarter of an inch. But I just, I'm just sort of, like I say, splitting the difference. This seam allowance is a bit bigger. Again, I'm not advocating doing it sloppily, but uh, sometimes I just want to do something quick. And I can see my cream, my tan, my tan uh, line here. What am I doing now? I'm doing Ian. And again, just sort of trying to nest those seams there, stitching along. And then the, uh, this one is Soleil, that's our granddaughter. The eye of Ian is intersecting. So again, I wouldn't, I didn't need the eye of Soleil, as I was saying previously. So that seam allowance is a little bit larger, and this, these are becoming a little bit smaller. And if it's a bit too small, I'll just backstitch there. Then I'll just nest these seams together. What am I doing here? This is Phoebe. And then pretty much my squares match up nesting up, making sure I catch the, bl I go along that tan line because I don't want the blue to show. And then what is this one? Oh, um, this is Tristan I'm coming to. My tiles might be matching up pretty good. So as you can see, um, you know, even having, I guess I messed it up, but I'm, I'm working with it. Some of the seam allowances are a little bit bigger, some are smaller. Fine. And then this is Allie. That's our, our daughter-in-law who's married to Niles. Allie's married to our ninth son, Niles. They got married, uh, it'll be two years from July. Oh my word, unreal. And as you can see, I'm, I can see the tan of the, 
uh, the uh, block. And just pulling that. And that's my, that's my Jordan. That's our second son. <laughs> All these names. That's funny. And then I will backstitch. And there is, yeah, so there's, now I got, now there's a little bit, now I'm, and I'm not, I'm not like paranoid, but there's a little bit of blue and it got a little bit, it got a little bit too thin, that seam allowance. So I'll just go back and I'll just make it, yeah, just straighten that up a little bit. There you go. And everything's pretty nice and straight. I go over and I'll spray it with water to shrink the fibers again, maybe a little bit of starch, and um, I'll just continue my rows. So you have seen my finished quilt when I've, by the time I uh, video this, but as you as you have seen from my quilt, I had put on a like a tan, a creamy tan, uh, creamy and tan toile border, the the inner border, and then I decided, as I was saying in the beginning, to use utilize my the rest of my five inch squares and what I'm doing with these five inch squares is I if you saw me cut them off I'm to make this long border I'm just chain piecing I'm just going to start pulling just as I cut them off from my from my um my uh charm squares five inch squares when I was cutting out my three inch squares these all these strips I'm just going to start pulling random that one's a little bit narrower. It's fine. Um, and just start sewing them right sides together. And this sort of a longish border along the sides uh, makes up very, very quickly. So what I, what, what I will do is I'll just continue sewing these strips, these packs of two together. And I'll just show you what I do very quickly. I just cut these chains apart. Again, these are bits of my five inch squares. And then I'll open this up, very simple. I mean, I'm sure you guys have done this before a million times. And I'll just sew two sets. I'll just sew two sets together. And then this strip, this outside border, makes up very, very quickly. As you can see, I'm not, I'm not really thinking about what colors go with what, that's the whole um, scrappy part of this quilt and uh, yeah so that's that one so now I have very quickly I have this lot and then I'll just start adding that so it's two four six eight and that's how it's so I would have I I would I will have um, done quite a lot of them you just keep adding on to your strips and there very quickly I'll put a red one on there very quickly is a very long border uh, outside border as you can see very very quickly I've just sewn them together in those just few seconds so I'll just add I'll just add a bunch of these here I'll just keep adding them on no rhyme or reason again just pulling from my squares and then i'm going to make as hopefully you will have seen a double border sort of a staggered border so i'm just going to continue i'm just going to continue making my strips now so here is my quilt hanging up and i am finished it i was last putting the small outside borders on it as you saw me doing i have finished uh doing the tan and the cream toile borders in the inner borders there and then here are what I was just sewing all of my lovely bits of my five and a half, my five inch strips together I will show you this um, take some still pictures of it and put them up um, but there is my true love family quilt with all of our names I added here happy forever <laughs> and then I've also did a um, I just cut out some letters that I free motion quilted true love on the top and family on the bottom just i just cut them out and uh added a bit of uh, iron on uh you know iron on stuff sticky stuff to applique them on 
So there is my lovely quilt. I used a um, I used a, a lovely red border and then another 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 little brighter red, and then of course you all have seen the backing for my quilt. This lovely beautiful red floral that I pulled from my red stash, my red my uh, my red shelf there. So you all have seen that in the beginning. But these are my my family. Not perfect by any means, but it's perfect in my mind. And I've just sent a picture to all of the kids and they were like, that's the best thing. Who's going to get it, mom? <laughs> I'm like, well, for now, it's mom and dad's. And we can't see our family, but oh, we miss them. But these are all of our lovely kids and grandkids and all of our in-laws. So there it is, a bunch of, t bunch of squares and a bunch of letters that I will have addressed in the beginning. Um, my true love, my true love family quilt. I hope you love it, people. And again, you probably won't have as many names as us. You could make it much smaller, <clears throat> perhaps as an um, anniversary present for somebody um, to honor some family members. Um, but that's how I did mine. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for following along and um, supporting me and being my fans. I appreciate it very much. So, from the true loves, have a lovely day. See ya. Take it into her side